very fun for me. Um, we talked earlier about Let's Playing and stuff, but I'm going to actually put this lower down so I don't have to try and make this make sense. Okay, so um, I know probably a lot of you are going to lean back and chill and relax while I'm doing this. Um, I hope you enjoy. I hope if you're watching and you're ready to go to bed, feel free. Otherwise, I'd love to answer questions and talk about this Let's Play. Um, this is Eternal Darkness. We're going to see literally every piece of content from this video game. This is a Let's Play I did in 2009. I ended up deleting it, brought it back. Um, uh, I was harassed and a lot of fucking crazy shit happened regarding this Let's Play. Um, but I fucking love this game. Y'all will let me know if I need to raise the volume on the game or my voice. I will probably be quiet for a while. I love the Silicon Light Knights intro, intro thing right there. That's the the quote from the the dad, I believe, at the beginning. Yeah, I brought it back because a lot of people did ask for it to come back, and I do. It is really good. This Let's Play is really, really good. Um, it is probably, not to toot my own horn, one of the best Let's Plays that was done on YouTube, period. Um, I love this game with all of my heart. For a long time, I was too scared to beat this game. Um, there were no Let's Plays of it then. Um, I, it was, I did it in 720p. Um, it's just a really good and fun game. Um, I was really glad America Online played this last year. Um, and, you know, watching her play that, uh, while I did backseat her a little bit, um, reminded me how good this game really truly is. Um, this is a GameCube game. Uh, it came out maybe like 2006, 2000, no, it must have been earlier, 2003. Um, I don't remember what year it came out. Um, yeah, look at how cool this intro looks. It's a horror game on the GameCube, which the GameCube was not really known for a lot of horror stuff. I mean, Nintendo wasn't really known for a lot of horror stuff, so this game in particular truly scratched an itch for me um, and really made me excited for horror. Um, the the gameplay and the all the elements of it really just truly it did something unique that I don't think anything has done uh, since. And I don't know if anything ever will do something like this cool and unique. Um, this can't be happening. And not only that, but this Let's Play. So for those of you who don't know my Let's Play history, I did a lot of Let's Plays and I tried to incorporate the kind of game. Hello everyone, and welcome to the Let's Play of Eternal Darkness Sanity's Requiem. This game was originally planned for the Nintendo 64, but was released on the GameCube in 2002, developed by Silicon Knights and published by Nintendo. I interrupted myself. Let me know if you if that audio is not okay. Um, yeah, so I, I really tried to make every Let's Play I did really fit the style of the game. This game is an extremely informative Let's Play. Um, very informative. I did post commentary, so my girlfriend at the time played the game. And I did the commentary. Uh, and I recruited a lot of friends to help with this, as you'll notice almost immediately. Um, there are a lot of different commentary styles jokes um your perception just wild shit that went on in this let's play because this game has sanity effects so i added sanity effects into my let's play um i fucking love let's play so much and i i hate that it i hate that it's not it isn't what it was like it doesn't exist anymore um whether by fate or misfortune this game really brought out like a lot of um, and they didn't take kindly to I really had fun doing it. Let me put it that way. Their attention turns to my granddaughter, um, for she is the last of my line, and the last hope for humanity. So I'm gonna be quiet when I'm talking, probably a lot of the time. But there's a lot of dead space in this let's play on purpose. Yeah, Let's Plays have become something very different. There's a lot of different... So, um, I've talked about CJU games quite a lot. CJU Gamer... CJU Gamer... Um, CJU Games is a Let's Player still. 
Um, there aren't very many of them that are good, but he is not very many good Let's players, but he is a good one. So that intro cutscene, you're supposed to really die. It's like time-based. I don't know why I didn't talk about it. I'm, I'm very curious as to why I didn't say anything there. Um, this was during a time frame where we did not talk over cutscenes. You were people... Fuck was that noise? I hope Danny's out of his room because there's like Hello. a lot of noise going on inside in the hallway. But no one talked over cutscenes. It was like a... It was just... Um, what is the word I'm looking for? Um, verboten, essentially, to talk over... Um, I'll be on the next flight out. I hope that was just Danny feeding the dog. It was very loud. It sounded like the food. I know it was just a sanity effect IRL. <laughs> I don't think video games need to look any better than this game did. I'm pleased to meet you. I trust you had a pleasant trip? Um, yes, I suppose so, considering. Yes, my condolences. This is most unpleasant. It's a shame we couldn't meet under brighter circumstances. There is going to be a lot of stuff that says pause to read, and I'm not going to pause. <laughs> We're not going to read. <laughs> but I must warn you. Yeah, this looks like real life. This is what real people look like. I'm afraid there's not much to see. That's interesting. Chip and Ironicus were very, um, very popular and very interesting. Both of those guys are very nice. They're from the Chicago area. Um... I never met either of them, but I did talk to um, Ironicus and Chip both in the, back in the day. They were not recruited for this Let's Play, although other Let's Players were. Yes, it's him. He's wearing our family ring. See, looks like real people. I don't understand. Why are you showing me this? Can't you check dental records or something? What is wrong with you? I'm... I'm sorry. It's my job. I don't want a game to look any better than this. And no, we can't check dental records. There's no head. I love that line. I love the way he says that. He no says, he says, there's no head. Ah, none of this. He like doesn't pause at all. I love that. I always hear that when he's saying it. We have no evidence except for the body. And what's left doesn't say much. Ugh, we don't have a single clue. Well, you better find out who did this. That guy looks like you when you were younger. Nice. I love, I love the looks of everyone. Every character in this game is so good. Um, one thing I will say about this Let's Play is, like, some of it looks super easy because we did it in post. Like, we we recorded all the video before we did anything else. Bye, Rose Cutis. Thanks. Have a great night. So we didn't read anything out loud. There's none of this is going to be read out loud. I just scrolled by it and pa like left it on the screen long like enough for people to pause. Games, Eternal Darkness takes place in a mansion. The thing that's different about this one is that you are able to play as other characters and other time periods and other locations by reading chapter pages from the book of Eternal Darkness. Alexandra Royvis, our main character, is a university student. She is voiced by Jennifer Hale, who also does the voice of Zelatoth in this game. You may know her as Naomi Hunter from the Metal Gear Solid games. In fact, David Hayter, Richard Doyle, and a few other characters are also from Metal Gear Solid and voice act in this game. Uh, let me know if my, my talking is too quiet. I can turn it up. Also, yeah, what kind of ice cream do you have? I still didn't eat the everything bagel ice cream. Our first puzzle is standard horror fare. The clock in her dream read 333, as did the clock in the main room, allowing us to know to set this clock to 333. One thing I remember from AOL playing this is that AOL, um, while AOL likes horror-themed stuff, AOL hasn't played a lot of these older horror games like this. Um, she's played a lot of horror-themed stuff, but not like a traditional or like early 2000s horror games. So for her, a lot of these puzzles were like more obtuse than they were for me on a playthrough, um, which makes sense. There are large blocks of text in this game. Most will be scrolled through quickly. If you would like to read them, please pause the video. Was I trying to write a wiki? No, I was trying to be informative. I think that like, um, this was the style of Let's Play at the time. Another typical horror element that is shown in this game is the shiny thing. In order to know that you need to pick something up, it will probably be shining. Again, let me know if my the 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 audio from the game or whatever is quiet or too loud or whatever. 
As was the style at the time. Yep, exactly. I fucking love vanilla ice cream, though. Vanilla ice cream's good. I had no knowledge of what was to come, nor did I care. How the knowledge changed me, it will also change you. Yeah, we talked a lot about Resident Evil logic when World's Cutest Gamer was playing. Or not, sorry, Silent Hill logic when he was playing Res Silent Hill 2. Oh my god. Oh my. I've been live for 12 hours. Um, Resident Evil and Silent Hill have their own kind of logic, and I think this game does too. But this game has a lot more, like, logical puzzles and a lot less, like, take a hair and take the hair and use something to do something, you know? For I have learned the frailty of flesh and bone. I really like this I moment here too. I really, really love how they do this right here. It's funny because I can talk over these cutscenes now because who gives a shit? Um, here is Kriya Skandamast. There, he's speaking in, in Latin. Facusatis aquae sumat, et animus eorum confirma, pugna huis, dia sit modo prima multarum. But then... Quam primum centurio Augustus. I would like to compliment you once more on your It changes to English. Our enemies did not have a chance. I don't know if, who's seen the 13th Warrior, but the 13th Warrior does that too. Um, I really like the 13th Warrior. It's actually a really good movie. For his orders. But if we are to retrieve the artifact, then we must be strong and patient. Yeah, it's Beowulf, yeah. It's a good movie. I also think this game really is like a huge... Um, what is the word I want? Like a sprawling epic, which I don't think anything has been like that. Like I don't think any, any other game has ever done. You're literally going to play as 15 characters. Enjoy. And all of the characters play differently. They have different strengths and weaknesses. They have different weapons, different mo like move sets, like everything. Um, they are in this in pretty similar locations, but Antonio Banderas. Oh, Antonio Banderas is so good in that movie. Surprisingly, yeah, they all play so different. It's so fun to play. Augustus is a Roman centurion in his late 20s and he's voiced by Richard Doyle. Like now I would read all of this out loud. Just because that's how I play video games now when I'm streaming versus when we did LPs. Reading out loud was totally gauche when you were, when LPs were like early on. Each character has different weapons at their perusal in order to kill zombies. Some have guns, some have knives, some may have crossbows. Pius wields a gladius, which is the same weapon that Alex just picked up in her time period. You can pretty much use this to hack off the arms or the heads of the enemies. Once they are down, you can either do a finishing move on them or they will gradually disappear. Yeah, I'm gonna pretend that this didn't happen, Domino. We're gonna pretend that we didn't talk about Rouge the Bat. <laughs> that block had on it the rune for Chaturga, the god of strength. Chaturga's pretty cool. So I think we, I think this, this playthrough was Zelatoth. Um... Just so we could show off the most sanity effects. The rune there was that of Zelatoth, the goddess or goddesses of insanity. Also, I love how my audio quality is so bad, but it still sounds fine. But it's like we had, I was not working with much at the time. Yeah, screenshot LPs were really, really... This was definitely one that I did not... I did not ever do a screenshot LP. Um, yeah, this whole game is post-Zelatoth. post, 
post commentary. Um, it had to be post commentary. If you when we, later on, will it'll be even more obvious. There had the rune on it for Uliath, who is the god of magic. Yeah, my audio quality and video quality were all really good at the time. I love that he just looked over at the popping. Oh, such cool details. Um, Like this game is so detail oriented. It's so beautiful. I fucking love this game. I don't know. I f always forget to like say this is one of my favorite games when people ask me my top five games, but it's definitely one of them. Yeah, screen screenshot walkthroughs were really really good for certain types of games, um, like a Dong and Rapa. I never watched the original Dong and Rapa let's plays, but they were definitely meant screenshots were good for that. Yeah, the combat system is so good. It's Mantarok. This last block had on it the rune of Mantrok, the corpse god, or the god of order and chaos. Fucking love him. Yeah, so Claymates was post commentary. Um, the commentary is all meant to sound like it's live. Um, this obviously is not meant to sound live, uh, but Claymates was definitely meant to sound live. Um, if I had done live commentary on Claymates, I would have probably lost my fucking mind. Uh, the, the I had to play some of those levels 30 to 40 times to beat them. Excluding Mantarok, who has dominion over all, the three gods have a sort of rock, paper, scissors uh, strategy. If you think of it as Zelatoth being greenery and plants, Chaturga being fire, and Ulioth being water, whereas plants soak up water, fire burns plants, and water puts out fire, it will be easy to remember which god triumphs over which. I don't think I used that that thought pattern when I talked about that with AOL. Um, but yes, I think I used Pokemon as the example when I talked to AOL about it because at that point I had learned that Pokemon works the same way. I didn't, obviously I'd never played Pokemon at this point, so I didn't know shit. Um, Hey, look, it's us. Yes, targeting. It's very important in this game to target the enemies that you're fighting. If you chop off their heads, they will be unable to see, and they may attack other enemies instead of you or just lash blindly. If you chop off their arms, they will be able to hit you. And it looks like now we've destroyed our own statue, which isn't a really good omen for Pius. I thought I was cute. I also think um, small hallways in this game can be really frustrating for the combat system. I definitely saw um, both AOL and I watched uh, Mecha Richter play this last year. Um, the uh, using the weapons in the hallway. In this game corresponds to the god that is strong for that, such as Chaturga is the god of strength, so that's your health meter. The other two meters that you will get later that Pius does not have are blue for magic and green for insanity. Yeah, so like the hallways being really cramped um, definitely can cause problems on a first playthrough. I see that now. I don't remember that being a problem, but having watched Mecha Richter and AOL last year play this. There are three paths to take which branch here. You may take Chaturga, which is harder to keep your health up and is probably the hardest path. Ulioth, which is hard to keep your magic up. Or Zelatoth, which is harder to keep your sanity up. Which sounds like the easier path, but you do get the recovery spell last. I will be taking Zelatoth and in bonus video showing alternate cinematics. Yeah, so I there's cinematics for every single one. Um, I watched, I every cinematic will be here. Um, I might skip the cinematic videos to save us a little bit of time because we don't really need to watch all of those. Um, I'd rather watch the LP parts instead of watching all the cinematics, so I may just skip those during this. Um, there's not really a lot for me to say during those, um, just because it's just more of the recording. I just went in and played every scene, so it's not even that exciting. I didn't like do a separate playthrough. There's a thing I showed AOL this when I gave her my, um, I gave her the save off my memory card so she could use that. Um, but you can go through and watch any scene that you want um, very easily. Eons have passed since then. 
and I have learned much. I was once as naive as a child, but now my mind is sharp. With the power of Zalatath, I can now read the thoughts of others and make them raving mad with a mere suggestion. Face me, and you shall surely perish. Well, cool. love to perish. I'd love to replay this game. I didn't know that there was an HD retexture mod that's very cool. The game looks great already. Thanks for watching, everybody. Hope to see you next time where we read our next chapter page. Cute. That's the end of the video. All right. So like I said, I think I'm going to skip the alternate cutscenes. We don't really need to see those. I started every video with The Darkness Comes. It's something I ripped off of Vega, who used to, who started the Clock Tower, or the, sorry, the Silent Hill piece they did with Hello, everyone. Um, back to Eternal Darkness. the beginning thing like from before, it. Like I there are multiple characters, each one activated by a chapter page. I cannot say what was the true beginning, nor am I sure of its end. So perhaps here is the best place to start. Yes, I love to perish. Ideas I first encountered in Sir James George well, Fraser's probably not perish. The Golden Bough, a study in magic and religion. We are overwhelmed by a very human need to weave a web of meaning where there may be none. Since time immemorial, ancient peoples have dressed up their lack of knowledge as gods and demons. I have discovered that some Yeah, this contains scenes of graphic violence. Of that was that. Peoples intertwine. And legends are born. Thy time is done, great ancient. Forever in shadow will you be master of chaos. Why does she have a voice like that? I don't understand. Silicon Knights is still trying to do stuff, so... But I don't... I don't think they're ever going to... Like, Eternal Darkness 2 just failed so bad. And then 2... Was it 2 Human? Was that the other game they made? Failed so bad. How does Pius do man one of Mantrox's spells? Too human, that is it. Okay. I don't know how he could do one of Mantrox's spells. I never really questioned that until right now, but... I just love the idea of this, like, sh god trapped in the fucking ground here like this. Good point. Yeah, I know. I don't understand how he could do that spell at Mantrock. Mantrock's a badass. He's also a trap, though, so, like, what are you going to do? There has to be something to do around here. I only wish something that fantastic. It's interesting. I also never really noticed that Elia's on the surface here. Yeah, so Silicon Knights did Twin Snakes. A lot of these voices, Ellie like I... Elia's a Cambodian slave girl and court dancer, and she is voiced by Kim My Guest. I needed a pop filter. Um, Here's another example of the circle of power. Another way to think of it is that Chaturga is rock, Ulioth is paper, and Zelatoth is scissors, which brings a lot of interesting metaphors to mind. Does it? Does it really bring you metaphors to mind? Why didn't you say them then, sir? Um, but yeah, a lot of these voice actors, I mentioned this earlier, are for Metal Gear Solid also. No character can do magic on their own without first picking up the Tome of Eternal Darkness. However, some characters have items that may heal their sanity, magic, or health. Oh yeah, X-Men Destiny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nothing read out loud. Thank you everyone for hanging out with me, by the way, while I'm watching this. I know some of you have seen this before and some of you haven't. 
Um, the traps I... in these hallways are pretty easy to avoid as long as you don't step on these obvious lightened squares. Thanks, Beep. Um, or I guess thanks, not Beep, because I wasn't Beep then. Yeah, I don't, I don't typically, for those of you who are watching this, this later. This is our first encounter with an Uliath zombie. Uliath zombies will shake and emit a strange noise until they explode if you do not cut off their heads. Um, uh, if you're watching this later, this is part of a, what is going to be like a 20 hour stream, I think, at this point. Which is great. I really appreciate all the support for my birthday. For the most part, the puzzles in this game do not take a lot of brain power. Right here, the sun is in the center, therefore the only candle that must be lit is in the center. Really just mimicry, not a lot of intense thinking. That's fair, I agree. Um, I think that, I don't think that that's a negative too. Like I feel like maybe that sounded a little negative when I said it that way, but I don't think that's negative. I quite like the puzzles in this game. Versus to like combat a... the lack of ingenuity in the puzzles in this game, there is the introduction of the sanity meter. And the constant effects of a low sanity meter are tilting floor, crying voices, there are sometimes howling and knocking, but there are other sanity effects that uh, are random and do not always appear or appear at different places. Me listening to this pop filter, I need a pop filter so bad. My plosives are all over the place. Here we have stumbled across some Mantarok zombies. They are all we saw last chapter since we didn't have a current alignment at the time. They are small, shriveled, and I kind of think it's an ego blow for him to be the most powerful but have the weakest zombies. That's fair. Fair point, me, from a million years ago. He is kind of trapped though, so, you know. going for a little walk avoiding every like foot thing they're really easy to see like i'm not trying to be glib when i say that i don't know if y'all can see them as well as i can they're very obvious to me this is big beefy <laughs> the zombies align with chaturga like the one you see here regenerate limbs have more health than the others and they either look like they have no skin or they're made out of bacon that's correct. I definitely thought they were beefy then, too, I guess. This man's thick, though. Look at his butt cheeks. Way too outlined. How's it already midnight? I don't know. I've been live for like 12, 12 and a half hours now. I'm not super tired yet. I feel pretty okay still. Yeah, it's really funny how a game like this can still be comforting or comfy to me, you know? Like, I don't feel... This doesn't make me feel scared or uncomfortable LA or does weird. I yet have a projectile weapon, so I do suggest picking this one up. Me out here like, you should pick up this blowgun. Bitch, you have to pick up the blowgun, and it also makes you fall in the hole. <laughs> I don't know how she didn't break her leg, honestly, though. A secret passage in the temple. Uh. Here are the Zelotaw zombies. Even after chopping off their arms and heads, they can still drain your sanity and swing at you with phantom limbs. I do really think they're cool. I think you can, yeah, I was like, you can finish them still when they're down too, with the blowgun. There are times when you have the opportunity to save a defenseless character. I don't really know how many there are, but... And why can this dude do magic? Why can he do magic? Some will be able to help you if you save them. 
If you murder them yourself, you will lose sanity. Oh, oh. Straight up pointing my gun in their face. Sorry, sir. Melee weapons are probably the best choice in this game. There's no need to reload, plus you have a much easier time severing limbs. That's true. I feel like AOL and, um, and Mecha both really used melee weapons a lot. So it's nice. It was nice to see that strategy pays off. Thank you for saying my voice is nice. I think I mentioned before I'm taking a voice acting class just because I'm just more curious about doing more voice related work. Each character has a different amount of time that they can run before needing to stop to catch their breath. The amount of time you run in the level is directly proportional to how long it will take you to regain your stamina. Oh, the fuck that meant, but okay. I guess, I guess that's true. When two creatures of different alignments favorite. meet, they will fight. It's definitely the best idea to just run away, um, or you can stand here and watch Chaturga womp these Zelta zombies. He's uh, he's doing pretty good here. I mentioned this, was it yesterday? No, sorry. On Thursday when I was streaming? How much, or Friday actually, I think. How much I fucking love when NPCs fight each other. It is my favorite part of video games. Like, I love to see it happen. Yeah, just getting whomped. So I didn't write a script for this, really. I just kind of knew what I wanted to talk about and talked about it when I got to those parts. But I didn't, like, write word-for-word -word scripts. I know some people who did post commentary have done that or did that. I did not. Dragon Age Inquisition? No, I have not played that. I played Dragon Age Origins um, and Awakenings, you and that's it. Leave, young fool, or you will find yourself as food for the dead god. Well, she didn't get a chance there. I don't even. Nobody even moved. She didn't even go anywhere. Chat, you'll have to know. Let me know if I'm having any stuttering problems. So my, I've been dropping frames just slowly for like uh, four hours now. So I don't know who this is. I don't know if this character has a name or is a person or anything. Um, he never comes up again. There's no other information about him. I don't even know, like, honestly, like I said, I don't even know if he has a name. So he reminds me of Paul, but it's obviously not Paul. So like, I think he's just a rando. There's a stage fight in DII. It's not scripted, but it's stage. You come across a dragon fighting a giant. It's stage because the dragon isn't normally there and the giants aren't in that area. Interesting. I do like a stage fight like that, too. Yeah, um, thanks a lot, game. Really creative puzzle. Putting a bar in a hole. Thanks a lot for that. I was very salty, evidently. I had not played Resident Evil, so I hadn't dealt with Resident Evil puzzles. Get the fuck out of there. Some of these rooms are harder coming back because you can't see the floor that's right ahead of you. Or that there's a friend right there. While the camera angle in this hallway leaves a lot to be desired, the fact that this crusher kills these zombies is really nice. It's very satisfying. Yeah, I like these puzzles better than Resident Evil puzzles, too. Our first sanity effect was a very simple one. Yep, TV just act like it turned off. Um, Some of these sanity effects wouldn't... Like, a lot of these sanity effects wouldn't work now. 
Um, they're based off of you playing it on a TV uh, with a certain kind of setup. And the way TVs looked back then, um, there are certain fights or certain, certain sandy effects that just are not relevant anymore, wouldn't work. Um, I don't know how well, I know that um, they use the same thing in the fight in the remake of, um, the remake of uh, Metal Gear, but I don't know, Metal Gear Solid, but I don't know if um, those sanity effects would hold up any better. And now to make the trek back to Mantarok's room. They don't? Well, you're not playing Twin Snakes, though, right? You're playing... You're playing um, the OG, right? Because it's in Twin Snakes that they did it. Look at how cool this looks. It's just so cool. It's super cool. It has it in those two? Really? I don't... I don't think they're the same though. I think that that cuz Metal Gear Solid was pre was the original Metal Gear Solid was pre this. Oh, but there were effects. Okay. Mantarok, the creator of the Tome of Eternal Darkness and all-powerful god has become powerless. You love to see it. You just trapped in hell. This is like a Bloodborne kind of thing to me now looking at it and thinking about it. Grant us eyes or whatever bullshit. Oh yeah, the fourth wall breaking gremlins. Yeah, that wouldn't work unless you're in a theater. Oh, enemies fighting enemies in video games is called infighting. Oh, that's of course that makes sense. That's a great name. I don't understand too, because he was like, very well, then. he was like, um, you better not stay here very long. And then he's mad that there's the heart inside of me. Like I don't. This part doesn't quite make sense when you think about it. Try not to think about it though. end of every character, there is a puzzle to complete that mimics the puzzles you are completing in the chapter page. Very exciting puzzles. I was a little salty though, evidently. So we haven't seen any um, Eternal Darkness uh, LP sanity effects yet. I think I didn't put any in the first two videos. Um, and there might, I feel like there has to be some in the next one. There are a lot of them once I started putting them in. When, um, both when AOL and when, um, uh, AOL and Mecca were playing this. I encouraged both of them to play with Zelatoth. I think not only is she the coolest, but it's also the easiest playthrough, I think, um, in a lot of ways. Um, it's technically considered the easiest playthrough because they drain your sanity, which is like the least frustrating as a new player. Um, but the fact that you don't get a healing spell until way later in the game is can be very frustrating. I did see there was a certain point where both AOL and Mecha did really get stuck for a while early on. Um, I think it's in, this is in the Kareem section, um, which was not surprising to me that it was that that they were stuck that badly. Um, yeah, that fight in the Kareem thing is very, very rough, and I think. Then it's rough in all versions. What do you um, for him? Yeah, this world is very intense too. Like they really built out a world for this game. It's so cool. Yeah, it would have to be like 
there's so many different things they could do like fake buffering or your internet going down or um, I'm just trying to think of like other things you could do on a PC because a lot of games have messed with meta gaming stuff since this um, this was I don't think that there was really much before this that really did that um, and not much since I mean like I think you know honestly um, Thing, games like I'm Scared. Of course. It's and it's all the horror genre, really, like that really plays with your expectations in that way. I think it's very cool. Thank you for watching. I'll see you guys next time when we read our next chapter page. Okay, like I said, I'm gonna be skipping the the extra bonus scenes. You can always go watch them on my LP. There's not much for me to say about them. Hey guys, welcome back to Eternal Darkness. From my research, it is apparent that the endeavors of mankind is this Paul already? Are puppetry at the I thought Kareem was next. Ancients. Whenever a king vows reform, the ancients move quickly to stifle it. Under the auspices of Emperor Charlemagne the Frank, the new Holy Roman Empire was at the height of its power. I really like this chapter. This is definitely like one of my top two. Tonk mit ad dominum et imperatorum nostrum, carolum magnum francum, deliver this to our lord and emperor. They didn't have Elia um, speak in a different language and then coming up. Yeah, like pulling up a notepad file, typing something interesting in it. Turning on your webcam. There's so many things that they could do now. Um, there are a bunch of games I've played that have tried to do interesting things, not always successfully. Um, I would say like Pony Island plays with expectations a little bit. Um, I mentioned I'm scared because I'm scared is I've never played I'm scared, but I've watched playthroughs of it. Those are really interesting. Um, they tried to do some of that kind of stuff in Inscription, but Inscription just I feel like it didn't wasn't very successful. Um, I have to warn him of this treachery. Like uh, Pony Island, or no, sorry, The Hex, which is another game by Daniel Mullins, pulls up your Steam friends, which is kind of interesting. And yeah, I love the church environment. It's so good. It's so cool looking. Anthony's backstory is unknown, and he is voiced by Cam Clark. Yeah, Cam Clark, huge voice actor. Been in a ton of stuff. So they really had good talent in this game, too. Hey, it's a casket. How about we just open it right up? I think AOL missed this and was in circles for like a hundred years trying to figure out to do this. We should get out of here. You have proven what we have feared the I just walked right up. Sorry, AOL, if that's upsetting. <laughs> Look how his body has been defiled. As if something has burst out from inside him. Here, take this for your protection. And find the bishop. He must be informed of this horrible discovery. How did I pronounce this? How did I pronounce this word? Did I even try to pronounce it? Scramus axe is a generic term, much like gladius, that just describes the type of sword it is. Um, Scrama meaning wound and sax meaning dagger. Bro, you went, you really went informative. You just said I'm going to describe what a Scramus axe is. Oops, we accidentally into hell. This is my favorite room also. This poor man. Anthony's a really tough character. He's in excruciating pain, and he just walked over a floor made out of hundreds of screaming faces. That's true. Yeah, we went he informative. Let's none of this deter him from trying to warn Charlemagne. 
shiny stuff. Yeah, I was like, I'm about to be informative. Bitch can't tell me nothing. Can't tell me shit. To be honest, the magic in this game is kind of complex the first time through. That's an understatement. Over everything as we get to it, so don't worry too much about trying to memorize everything that's on the screen right now as we'll use all this later. Yeah, I was like, please don't. It's so complicated. The magic is so complicated in this game. I was like, no, thank you. And it is very complicated. Again, I watched AOL and um, Mecca play this last year, and both of them had a lot of confusion and complication playing the getting the magic right the first time. Good night. While the game calls these runes, it's kind of an inaccurate word, as runes replace letter by letter, and each rune here replaces a word. Okay, babe. To identify a rune, you must have both the rune and its corresponding magical codex. It's really hard to see stuff in this part of the game, though. I think that's my, like, my biggest problem with it. It's very hard to see stuff. Here's another dude. I guess you can save a bunch of people. I feel like I don't know if anybody I watched saved this guy. But maybe. Give me your torch, baby. This monk was fleeing the seemingly possessed bishop when he dropped his urn that he was carrying from the baptismal fount. Oh, he must not die. How else would you get the sword if he died? I don't know. Don't, don't kill him. Hurt him. He just helped you. Did you hear it? I don't know if y'all heard that because I was talking to But I said, don't hurt him. He just helped you. Uh... So again, this is another thing I saw AOL and and um, Mecca be really lost at. Trying to combine all these pieces or even notice they're all there. Like they're all the pieces are right here. I feel like they both went around in a while for a while trying to find where they were, where, you know, this, these guys were, these pieces. Even without the codex, a rune can be used to make a new spell. Yeah, that's, I mean, I think a lot of this is complicated logic that's not easy to figure Which out. Which is a great weapon to have against a Zelatoth or Mandrock zombie. There are three types of runes in this game. They're the alignment runes, one for each god. That's Ulia. There are the verb runes, which uh, explain what is being done in the spell. And then there's the noun rune, which explains what the spell is being done to. Um, you associate with horror games a lot, but you feel like I didn't do many horror LPs. Yeah, I think we, I only did this, uh, and so this was an informative LP. Clock Tower 3 was blind, um, and then, um, Limbo, I think. You know, I don't think there's any other, there were any other horror games I specifically LP'd. I guess Luigi's Mansion is a horror game, you know? Again, I feel like it was hard for people like me wa having, watching people play this for them to see all the things that Much needed like to be codex, done. It's not necessary to find the spell scroll before you can uh, cast a spell. However, you won't know what the spell does until you cast it, and that might be kind of risky. It's not risky. I don't know what you could do. I mean, I guess you could do something fucked up, but I don't really think there's that much fucked up stuff you could do. Yeah, there's a lot of old school point and click logic in games like this. It's just a horror trope, really.
Yeah, thanks for hanging out, Ruby. Have a good rest of your night. Forgot about this. You have to know to use it. Like, you just have to know to use it. Once you've found all the codex, the spell scroll, and all the runes, the game will automatically put the spell together for you. Plus, you can able, you're able to assign it to a hotkey, which is not really always essential unless you want to do it quickly like a healing spell. I can just meter oh. refills as you walk, which can be kind of annoying. It is very annoying. Um, oh, I did do Shattered Memories. That's true. That is true. Um, I consistently streamed and talked about a lot of horror games back then. You associate me strong with Clock Tower and Silent Hill. Yeah, that's true. I never did a Silent Hill LP except for Shattered Memories, though. But I, I played the shit out of that game. Claymates is a horror game. Yeah, again, these this puzzle here, definitely AOL and Mecha fumbled around with a lot. A lot. It, it's not intuitive. Um, you might miss a single piece and then be lost. You might not understand the spell. Like, there's so much to this. And definitely saw AOL step on this plate a bunch of times and then step off. This puzzle really bothers me. You'll see that the door closes before Anthony can run to open it. And the only way to keep it open is to depress it with these three uh, urns that we filled with gross water. Okay, why does it stress me out though? Beep. Why did it stress you out? Why did you not like it? Why doesn't Anthony just use books off the wall to depress it? Oh, well, that's fair. Good point. Good pro good point, Beep. Um, you're surprised I never did an LP of Silent Hill 3? Uh, it's because Vega did all that kind of stuff. So I, like, just didn't want to add to that, I guess. I have a hard time still even, like, if someone's playing something, being like, oh, I'll play that, too. Like... So, you have come to return my book. Okay, Darth Sidious. It's filled with the Sonic uh, G Fuel. This is a pretty easy fight. Fighting the bishop with the two-edged sword is your best bet, and all you want to do is stay out of the way of his blows. Duck and run. It'll be over really fast. That sword is so big. I don't know how he's swinging it that hard, but whatever. Finish him. I love the finishing move shit. There's just so much weird, scary stuff in this game for no reason. Like, that just looked so cool for literally no reason. And everything you look at has, like, information, too. Oh, gross. This looks so fucking the gross to me. Sword is really great during the battle with the bishop, but in this hallway it can be a horrible mess. Yep. That's a, that was not going very well. Oh, trappers. These are also very confusing, too, for anybody, everybody. Here's a Zelatoth trapper, although all three do the exact same thing. I find them to be really cute myself. Oh, of course they're cute, Beep. Of course they're cute. And this is really super complicated. I don't feel like AOL or Mecha figured out what the hell was going on in this area. It's so confusing. This place is pretty easy to figure out and can be very helpful. When the portal is blue, you go to a place where that you can uh, refill your magic. You'll see here only our sanity is low, so we're actually going to go to the sanity one. 
I literally close, said it won't change, so you must step back until it turns green and run in. I literally said it was confusing and then I just said ten years ago I said it was easy. It's not though. It seems easy when you know the trick, but like if you don't understand what that means, like then it's bullshit. I know past beat betrayed me. How dare they? Thank God for that sanity though. Trappers are kind of like bees. Once they sting you, they die. Cool analogy. Bye. No chance. That guy's supposed to fuck you up. You're supposed to like sneak through that room. Um, but you can definitely just run around the corner and get the fuck away. Don't do it. Don't attack him. He was just living his life. I just love what happens to this character. It's so cool. Antoine commence à avoir la très malade. Il a des problèmes à marcher. Je me demande qu'est-ce qui aurait pu arriver à Charlemagne. Pourquoi je parle en français? So that was uh, Oz, another Let's player, speaking in French because we're in a French situation. That's the first sanity effect that I added to this Let's Play. Um, I don't remember what he said, but I'm pretty sure the last thing he said was, why am I speaking in French? Um, bye, Funky Greenberg. Thanks for hanging out. This is a Zelatoth horror, and in addition to its physical attack, it also has a magic attack where it saps your sanity. Yeah, so this guy's really, really easy to kill. I know AOL was stuck here for a while, but it really is just a basic, like, you have to focus on things. Um, it's very hard to um, to know that kind of stuff, though, on a first playthrough without being told. Um, yeah, the sanity effects that are in this LP are all... Anthony's story is the most tragic. He seems to be the only character that's doing what he does for the sake of the world, not just for his own greed. And he's met with a very unfortunate end. No good deed does go unpunished. That is true. Sorry, buddy. Too late, buddy. What's a mirror lurk? Mirror lurk these nuts. You are a fool for trying to save him, Anthony. His fate was decided many centuries ago, as is the fate of this world. Despite your faith, there is little to save you from the power of Zealot. Fuck yeah. Sometimes I feel like that's going to happen to me. Just bust out. They're enemies from Fallout. The crab monsters from Fallout. Got you, got you. Oh, they Meyer lurks? Meyer lurk. Got you. Anytime a chapter would end, I essentially... When do you want to answer that for me? What happens when you turn 30? What do you mean? Like in real life or? Each time a character in a chapter page learns a spell, so does Alex. So now Alex has the ability to cast the spell to enchant an item. Let me in. Making a terrible joke about society's perception of age. Okay, that's fair. That's fair. Yeah, that's one thing this game relies on is you remembering what you just learned, which that's kind of difficult. Take a close look at that painting. As Alex's sanity drops, things around the mansion change too. Why would we go in here? Oh, that's where that picture is. Forgot. That was really fast. This is Kareem's chapter. 
All right, see you guys next time. Okay, well, uh, hey there, everyone. This is Alcow playing some Eternal Darkness, and well, let's just look at the next chapter page. Here. It's it's a thing. Um, Dreams. so. That probably didn't make anybody excited, except for me. Um, Raukau is one of my favorite Let's Players. Um, I watched Raukau a bajillion hours every single time. Um, if you know who Raukau is, that that was just Raukau. Um, that's how he starts every video. I asked him if he would help me by doing the beginning of one of my videos. Um, one of my favorite things. I also collabed with him. He did a video of, um, I did a LP of uh, Yoshi's Island 2 plus 2, and he did a video for me, for me with me for that too. Um, I love Raukau. If I say the boss fight is easy, you'll scream which boss fight? Or Kareem. I love Raukau though. Raukau still makes LPs. Um, he does not sound as excited as that. Oh, the cream fight? I hope I don't say it's easy. To be fair, I didn't play it though. My ex did, and she played it. So all my advances, you dominate my dreams, and I can think of nothing else. Kareem is horny. I fear I desire you many hundred times more than you love me. My life has become a waking dream. Oh, I need to drink water, chat. For weeks, I have dreamed of an ancient treasure so precious that it changes all life around it. It must be mine, Kareem. If you truly desire me, as you say, then you will find this for me. The gameplay is all my ex, all of it. I will she did all of it. Both of our dreams will come true. I need nothing more than you. You have enthralled me to the point where I can think of nothing else. Promise. If I leave, you will not forget about me. You need not worry. I just oh, it's Sunday night. People outside are screaming. You seek. Leave now, Kareem. And I shall await you. <laughs> you dumbass, Kareem. That has Ulioth on it and Chitur. I guess it has all the sim symbols on it. Kareem is a Persian nobleman trained in the art of the sword, but he's also the kind of guy who's probably going to text you after your second date to tell you he's in love with you. He's voiced by Reno Romano. That is fucking true. Thank you, past beep. He is definitely going to text you after your second date and say I'm in love with you. 100%. That's this guy. That's this character right here. My favorite room in the game. Wee. Yeah, having Rock in this video makes me very happy. Uh, um, yeah, no. <laughs> I, I strayed away from the main weapon is the Talwar. A little bit um, which of is a curved blade, kind of like a scimitar, but there's a little issue with the game calling it that, considering this takes place in AD 565 and tall wars didn't exist until the 1300s. Thank you, Beep Salt. I was literally about to say you stopped being as informative when you said mm, uh, mm, mm, and ran out of the room, but then you explained to us what the fuck a tall war is. Love it. Although his sanity and magic meters are pretty small, Kareem's health meter is one of the longest in the games. It reflects the fact that he's young and well trained. This music is so good, y'all. God, this music is so good. Wouldn't it be a funny sanity effect if I just turned my stream off right now? It and just never came back? Barrier we saw last chapter where an enemy must be killed for the barrier to go away. There are also ones that are only removed by picking up new runes. Coruscating barrier, what a word. Yeah, 
Yeah, I probably eased up as the LP went on. This was, I think this is the only LP that I actually actively posted on Something Awful. I did like, um, I did like actual covers and like forum posts for all my LPs. Um, there is truly something in my eye and has been in my eye for the last couple of minutes. If you've noticed, I've been rubbing my eye. Okay, so that was some me talking backwards. Um, another sanity effect in the LP. I didn't realize I started doing so many of them at this point. That one got me uh, because I hate backwards voices. Oh, lots of friends. Here are some Chaturga Trappers, although they're no different than the Zeldoth ones. Um, and Kareem actually has some Chakrams which you can throw at them to hit them from a long range in order to not let them um, use their powers. I didn't you. turn on a Jackbox audience kit during my stream. Um, I don't know if that... I'm sorry that everyone had to see that. Um, I, don't, I didn't turn it on. I guess it turned itself on, but I didn't do that. The torch is a pretty hit or mess weapon. On some creatures it does remarkable damage and will kill in one hit, and in others it does none at all. Kind of bullshit that it could turn itself on like that. Oh, it's not on. It's I don't know why it's on for you, but it's not on for me. Dual tall wars, very cool. This little guy right here is a Chaturga bone thief. He just came from out of that dude's body and he wants inside of you. That's true, he does. He wants directly inside of you. For each type of zombie, there's occasionally a bone thief of the same kind inside of them. You can also see here that this is our first occasion with our sanity level getting low enough that we actually are flashing red as we lose health. Oh my god, the music is scaring me, like in real life. <laughs> I'm not even playing this game, y'all, and I'm still scared of it in like a way. You can take a guess as to what that spell scroll is going to do. No, I didn't read it, so I can't take a guess. I'm sorry. There's a bug on my screen. I don't even know. Did I? Do I notice? Here on the north side of the room is one. We don't actually have the room. What is that? I did notice that. Y'all, it looks like almost nothing when you're, but you can, I hope y'all can see that. Just literally a bug crawling across the screen. That one's super fucking freaky. They're still on my screen, oh, by the gross. way. Get that stuff off my screen. Yeah, oh, there there's... we go. Anyway, here's a Uliath horror. Uh, this guy's much the room. same fighting technique as the other ones. You want to cut off the three heads and it's going to shoot lightning at you. That's going to sap your magic. God, those bugs are gross. Oh no, there's a sanity effect that is changing the numbers around on your stream time app. Oh no, Lyra, thank you for the $39. That's so nice of you. I really, really appreciate that. You never saw that effect? Yeah, there's so many that it's hard to see all of them. I really appreciate that, Lyra. Thank you so, so much. Another 39. Got, got a, we're almost back up to nine hours Even again. Though we have all the runes we need. The game will not put together re the recover spell for us because we don't have all the codex. I think that makes sense, though, that the game doesn't... The game doesn't give you the spell unless you have all the stuff for the spell. You can make it if you want, but... Nope. Oh. I like the little way this gate keeps too, by making you kill certain enemies to get certain runes to continue on. My dear Alex, I will always be at your side. There are times when insanity takes hold, and 
nothing seems right. Jorelo's time is I will help you. Fear not. For I will keep the darkness away. This isn't really happening. The sanity effect, but it's not really a sanity effect. That one's very complicated. It's like In a addition to random sanity effects, there are also scripted sanity effects, like the one we just saw. They occur in the same location every time you play through the game. Uh, yeah, beep. But the question is, why does that? If the, why is that a sanity effect if it happens every time? It's like a scripted thing. I don't think it can't happen. I think it always happens. Oh my god, that's because I'm we're scared. playing through on the Zelatoth alignment. I'm scared. The most worthless spell in the game, the recover magic spell. Yeah, it's not great. I'm like scared of this game right now. I think it's because I've had been streaming for 13 hours. Friends, so many friends. This is the first of two times in this game where something happens that you can call enemy waves or I like to call a boss rush, although it's not actually boss enemies. Um, what happens is you are treated to a group of enemies like this and you must kill all of them before moving on. And at the end you're, you get a, uh, a bonus item. Um, and both of these things happen in this chapter of the game. Hmm. I'm interested in the concept of that this doesn't happen in another part in the game. I guess I'd have to think about it. Maybe it doesn't, though. Just waiting patiently. The strategy for this on the Zelototh path is going to be a little different than it would be on the others, considering you don't have a way of healing your sanity right now. You need to make sure that you finish off every creature that you're fighting, because if you do not, your sanity will dip to zero. And right now, we do not have a healing spell, so we are limited by the amount of times we can heal with the uh, amulet that we have. Which was definitely a problem for both AOL and Mecha playing this. It was so fun to watch other people play this game. I've never seen other people play this game until last year. Um, otherwise, it's just been me seeing me play this game. It's not a, it's a niche game. It's not, there's not a lot of copies of it out you there in the world. take into consideration how long it takes to beat both of these enemy rushes, you'll notice that this is pretty much the shortest chapter in the game. Although you get a lot of things, the, there's not really puzzles, there's not really a lot of um, imaginativeness, just a lot of hacking and slashing. I mean, it makes sense. This character is like the buff young man. Um, he's fighting for love. I feel like I've been watching this for a hundred years and we're only like four people in. Yes, he's biting, fighting for Bone Town. That's his only care in the world, is his lady. Oh, I was like, why is that guy not dying? But he has a bone thief in him. I, th whatever is in my eye is still in my eye. Now that we have the Zelatoth rune, we are automatically able to align any spell that we've already made with Zelatoth. I don't know if I because would. Because of the way characters react when injured, 
healing is always a good idea when you know you're going to be facing more enemies. I don't know if I've loved anything this much in my life that I would fight through all these zombies. It's a lot of zombies. Yeah, I'm trying not to rub my eye too much because I know it'll get worse. Let's use the recover sanity spell to try it out. My family? I don't know, man. I don't know, man. This many zombies? I'm a baby. I don't think I could do it. It's pride of pride in my eye? Yes, yes. It is very much pride. There are not a lot of places where it's safe to save the game. If anything can kill you in the room, you can't save. And sometimes you can't save anyway. Oh, the game was so nice to let me save there. You can save a lot of places in this game. We just don't do it a lot in this playthrough because we know what we're doing. Um, but because this is an older game, there's no auto save, and that definitely hindered again both AOL and enchanted items before to um, fix them. Mecca. Also enchant weapons in order to make them stronger. They will generally be stronger against all enemies, but particularly stronger against the weaker alignment. And I definitely I didn't use a, um, the. We didn't use, um, what is the word I'm looking for? Um, we did not use, um, uh, the adding the spells to the D-pad very much. Since our sword is equipped with the Zelatoth alignment, it will be stronger against these Uliath zombies. And let's give these guys a chance to sing for once. They did a little thing. Oh, so many trappers. Much like the wall getting in the way of the two-handed sword, the wall right here is getting in the way of our chakrams. It's honestly probably a good idea to do this now, though. a little addition to the Trapper universe. There are... Uh, there's enemies in here now. It's bullshit that there's enemies in here. Absolute bullshit. Especially because you, like, then fill up your sanity then immediately something sucks all your sanity away. Mass Effect was like that because it had autosave sometimes, but not all the time. That makes sense. I hate, um, I'm a very big saver. I really save a lot. Um, there are very few secrets in this game, and once you miss them, you are out of luck. So here we have our ruby effigy, which will be used for a later part of the game. I don't remember if Mecha got all three of these, but AOL definitely did. It's very helpful. Um, Yep, you gotta save as many times. You gotta save like five times to make sure everything happened. It's a pain in my ass. Uh, that was another sanity effect. You probably really couldn't hear what I was saying. You weren't supposed to really hear what I was saying. Um, I don't even remember what I was saying. My own voice whispering like that scared me and I'm scared now. Hmm. Yep, scared me. I my own little Yeah, the end of it is just I said something about it's a pain in my ass, but I don't remember what I said for the rest of the time. Here we go, AOL. We'll see how she did it. I don't really remember what she did. Because Mecha died here a bunch of times too, like a whole bunch. A lot of people consider Eternal Darkness Zelatoth Path to be the easiest way of playing through the game. 
And while that may be true in some respects, it's definitely way harder, especially in this chapter in particular. Um, currently, the only two alignment runes we have as Zelatoth are Zelatoth and Ulioth, which means the only recover spell we have that's really worth anything right now is the recover sanity spell. Now, that can be a very helpful spell, however, right now, we, the only healing we, we have is to heal with the amulet, which only has five times of being used, plus, as you may have noticed, it doesn't really do a lot of healing. So at this point in the game, if you're out of the amulet, you're pretty much out of luck when it comes to healing yourself. And once your health gets low, this is really hard to fight, because you have so many zombies coming at you, and you'll be moving very slowly. Yeah, this is really difficult. I'm glad that uh, we acknowledge that during this. Hurting while you're still healing. There's a big boy at the end of this too, if I remember correctly. I do not remember there being this many enemies. Is this big boy time? No, still not there? Wow, that's a lot of enemies. Yeah, you really have to be particular here. The enemies through this have been getting progressively harder. We started with Mantrox zombies, then um, Zelatoth zombies, then Zelatoth bone thieves, and finally a Zelatoth horror. Still better than the Clock Tower 2 hospital zombie segment. I don't, I don't ever want to think about that in my life ever again. That's so hard. I fucking hate that part of the game. And you really have to heal your sanity here because otherwise it's going to sap all your sanity and immediately sap all your health and you die. And that shit happens too. I also think that killing this enemy is a lot easier if you know exactly what you're doing. So like you, if you hit it in the face three times, it'll, oh, except it's just sapping all the... Notice... Even in this Let's Play where we had like practiced everything, still had a really rough time with that boss right there. Completely almost out of health, completely out of sanity. It's very difficult. She was also horny, is what happened to her. Who did this to you? You were gone so long. I... I gave myself to a nobleman with a jealous mistress. She was only gone for like a couple of hours, right? Like that's what blows my mind here. It's not an eyelash, it's like, um, I don't even know what it is, honestly. It feels like a crumb, so much for you know. Only of me. I should never have left. I have seen my folly and have already paid She really left. He really left for like I 5 see minutes. So much more now. In death, I know the true value of the artifact which I asked you to find. And it is not for us to possess. She's like, "Oh shit, don't touch it. Don't do it." You must make a sacrifice. The plot line of this game is so interesting. Like, there's all these little Sacrifice. mini stories in it. Why should I do anything for you? You lied to me. Betrayed me. I don't think he li she lied to him. Look so good anymore. Yeah, he's just horny. The past. Oh, the Kareem. You are now, you will also become something more. Just as I am. But the sacrifice must be made. We must remain here and guard the artifact. Dark things will come to claim it, and you must be strong to keep it from them. Without your sacrifice, the world will fall. I know that like some people darkness. in this series or the story are related. Love. Isn't the things I do for love a quote from something else? Don't they say it? I think I mentioned this when 
AOL was playing this or something. Isn't that what he says in Game of Thrones? But like, there's no, I mean, I guess they're, I guess, um, courage the cowardly dog, really? Really? 